there were lots of great single player games that came out in 2022. Since I'm a JRPG nut, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 and Harvestella were the standouts for me. Not to mention a handful of JRPG remasters, including Chrono Cross, Tactics Ogre, Crisis Core. And I would say my top single player games were Elden Ring and Neon White. But enough of that, everyone's talking about single player games. What about 2022's best games that you can play with your mom? Mom and I played a bunch of games together, so we wanted to share our favorite games. That are not PvP. Disclaimer, Mom refuses to play PvP games. These include, but are not limited to, BRs, team shooters, platform fighters, MOBAs, and party games. If you or a loved one has experienced similar symptoms, smash that like button. Multiverses. A cool twist on an already very familiar genre. Everyone's either played or, you know, watched their son play lots of Super Smash Brothers. Uh, yep. But uh, what makes this game particularly cool is the emphasis on team play. They really want you to play the 2v2, and for each person, you can play different roles. You got tank, support, assassin, mage. You can mix and match however you want. You can even have, like, two mages together. Why not? And it's just really cool. And you can, it also has a lot of characters like Bugs Bunny down to Adventure Time's uh, Finn and Jake. So different generations can enjoy this even, you know? Perfect to play with mom. And best of all, free to play and cross play. Can you believe that? Tempting, but no. Played up, uh, basically a better overcooked. It's more about like building a restaurant in the core of the restaurant rather than like trying to figure out each level's trick back when you would play overcooked. And one thing that was really cool that mom pointed out was that it really felt like a roguelike in a sense that sure you failed at first, but as you're progressing, you got better over time, but you also got more rewards and things. So it, it, it would just, it just felt better to play each time you played and you're really into it. Yeah, and we were so into it that we like didn't even realize how much time was going by. Usually we play those kind of games and, and we get frustrated yeah, and we're like, okay, so I'm tired. True. Let's play something new. Yeah. And no, this didn't happen this time. Hours so it's good. can go by and you won't even yeah. realize it. Yep. Core Keeper, a 16-bit survival game that is very accessible and forgiving. It's the kind of game you can get someone else to play with you even if they've never played a survival game. Yeah, the, the music in the game is really chill. And despite the, the graphics being very simple, it's very pretty and so easy to just get lost in that game, in that world for hours. Yeah, I really want to play more of it. I just can't seem to find the time. Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. If you love Borderlands and you love Dungeons and Dragons, you're doing yourself a great disservice by not playing this game. The Past Within, a co-op puzzle game that you could bring to your family gathering and even just have your grandma play with you. Need I say more? Nobody saves the world. Basically Legend of Zelda with like their dungeons, not so much with the puzzles per se, but with Final Fantasy V's class system, it's really cool. And you also have classes like a rat or a turtle or an egg, just to give you an idea of what the general vibe is. It, it's, it's a really good introduction to class-based RPGs in case any of you like gamer parents out there want to get your children into RPGs. I think that's a really cool one to get into. Yeah, and what I thought was cool is that you can tell when you're playing the game that the devs love games. I mean, they love games. They had references, obscure ones and mainstream ones to anything that you could possibly imagine, and it showed. The Rising, basically Vampire Valheim, where the sun is your natural predator. According to my Steam replay for 2022, I spent 26% of my gaming time playing V Rising, where I had a great gothic castle and vampire minions to do my bidding. My only complaint, though, was that while this game was way more fun to play with others, the difficulty spike for multiplayer made it really difficult. Ship of Fools, a roguelike adventure on a boat. Uh, the characters, music, art style, everything is all so upbeat and quirky. It's, it's just one of those games that you want to get a friend to hop in and play with you just for them to end up coming in and wailing on you with a paddle over and over. Hey man, you deserved it. Just saying. Ugh. So that is our list of top co-op games to play with your mom. So what games did we miss? Leave your comments and let us know. There are a bunch of co-op games coming out this year in 2023, and we're looking forward to playing them. If you're interested in watching us check them out, you can watch us on Twitch. We stream every Wednesday through Saturday, and we love chatting with people about games. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. From both of us here at Spawn Respawn, Happy New Year. Happy New Year!